After a very disappointing defeat to the New York Football Giants, I feel that it's time I give my State of the Franchise address, and I also will be giving a preview of this week's game against the Atlanta Falcons. So this will be a two-parter, so stay tuned. But you're listening to Money in the Bank. So in my address to the Carolina Panthers and, man- and mainly the fans, it's question everything. Question everything. Don't, don't, you don't necessarily have to jump off the ship, but question the things that have gone on. You know, question management, question coaching, everything. I mean, I, if, if I'm looking at management, start with management. You know, we, you know, people are, are keep trying to sell me on a rebuild, and 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 I, and I and I understood it was a rebuild. I know they tried to tell us it was a retooling, which I thought, which I knew was a lie. You can't retool with a college coach that, that never that hasn't had NFL head coaching experience, and an offensive coordinator that has not coached, that has not been a coordinator at this precipice of this league. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't tell me it's a retooling. It's definitely a rebuild. Okay, but the rebuild going into year two, let's break down year one, actually. 5-11 your first year, unexpected because of how you looked in a lot of games. You played a lot of a lot of tight games. Cool. And, 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 I, and I had a bunch of people telling me, like, hey, bro, we're, we, we're close, man. We're, 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 losing, we're losing tight games. And I, and I keep telling people that this is the NFL. A lot of the games are tight. A lot of games are a lot tight, tighter than what, than what the score would tell you. There's about one or two plays that happen throughout the course of a game that can lead that can lead to a team leading by 14 or just leading by three. The games are tight. These are professional athletes. I, I, that's, I'm not giving credit for playing tight ball games. I mean, I give you credit for the things that you've done and the wins that you were able to acquire, but playing tight ball games does not impress me. Now, going into year two, my my expectation was about seven wins, seven to eight wins, I, and I my, and the floor was definitely seven. It, it can't be below seven to me because otherwise it's a failure. You start out hot three and zero. You play. You run up against a, a Dallas team that is better, that is definitely better than you. Um, but you get beat. But you don't bounce back. It's it's all about the bounce back. Like you're gonna lose games in this league. You're not going undefeated. Let's just be clear. It's, this league is too tough. But how do you bounce back? How do you recover? Blow a lead to Philly. Then I think that what, what was the next loss? The next loss was Minnesota. And you blow that one because your offense can't stay on the field. Somehow magically got some things to go your way. Had a chance late, but you blew it because your defense blew coverage because because your safety's awful. Then you go into New York. For one in five. This is one of the most embarrassing losses in franchise history. I literally, this is how bad I knew this was about to get for us. I literally went to the fair. I didn't watch the game. Didn't watch the game this week. I said, I was not going to stress myself out with this team and <laughs> watching them play or try to play football. I said, I'm going to go to the fair and going to go enjoy my life. I did. I did. I didn't let them stress me out. We lost 25 to 3. It's, that's, that's, it's, you know, I, I, I can get with the rebuild. I can get with the word young team. But there are games and moments in time that you have to win those. Philly, you have to win. New York, you have to win. I said we lose to Minnesota. I predicted we lose to Minnesota, but Philly and New York, you have to win. Even if you're a coach that showed that showed that much promise that everybody told me about the year before, comes in and wins those games in year two. A guy that showed me that much promise that from what I was told. Losing close games doesn't matter when you've blown on the team that you were better than. You know what I'm saying? You have to I have to look at how we were losing these games. That's why I say question everything. Um, you look at I like Scott Fritter. I've, I've loved what he's done, the aggressiveness that he's brought to this franchise. He is a guy that I thoroughly enjoy watching work. But, but he was a part of trading for Sam Darnold. And I gotta give credit where it's due and blame where it's necessary. Trade a second and a fourth round pick for Sam Darnold. Hoping that he will be better, it'll be a better option what you had last year. I talked about it in the money in the bank. I, I may, I'm not quite sure, but I think I may have said this. I know I've said it at some point before that when it came down to Teddy and Sam, I said this: Teddy's a better quarterback than Sam, though, as far as just playing the quarterback position, like doing the right things and t- you know doing the things you want a quarterback to do. He's better than, than, Teddy, than, than Sam in that aspect. Sam has more physical tools. Which is what Panthers fans we thought held us back last year with that the, the 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 physical restraints that Teddy had didn't allow us to really take the next step and, and, and catapult forward. 
we traded one for the other, and we and, and the gamble has thus to this point failed. Three games, there were things that didn't look great, things they weren't improved upon, and Sam has looked rocky ever since. I mean, I look at Sam and I and I, and I look at a guy that looks shell shocked every time he drops back, and a guy that statistically, even last year, does not throw well from clean pockets. So, irregardless of what's going on in front of him, he does not perform. Well. Sam, uh, Sam Darnold playing with Christian McCaffrey, I knew would help. I, I, even, even, from, even from the training camp days when we were doing the podcast, I said that a lot of his offense is going to lean on Christian McCaffrey still. I just don't see how they're going to get the ball out of his hands because even in the practices, it looked like the first read was to go to Christian McCaffrey. And if that's the case, man, then then, then when, when, when McCaffrey goes out, which he is, where are we going to go? And again, trading away draft capital, trading away our future, for this it is tough, man. It's tough because I don't know how we move forward as far as this franchise. Sam Donald's going to be your quarterback next year. Let's just be clear. But there's no true way to me to move forward if you have no draft capital. There's ways teams have done it. The LA Rams have done it a different way. But the LA Rams have money and they have a lure and they have a coaching staff people actually trust. A la Matt Stafford choosing to go to the Rams over the Panthers. He, that, that's, a, that's a better franchise infrastructure and better coaching. I'm going to go there. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not by mistake, man. Right now, the Panthers are a team desperately trying to trade for a guy that, and I know nothing's been set in stone, but a guy that's facing some very daunting legal troubles. And we are first in line, one of the first in line to try to trade away our future to be able to acquire him. That's telling you where we're at. We're a desperate team. We've been desperate for quite some for quite some time, and right now it's starting to show. We're a team that's trying right now, trying not to hurt players' feelings in Sam Darnold. Trying not to hurt his confidence. Fam, we're not we're we're not winning games right now. And I, and I understand there's a lot of things that get to go into play with that, but I think a lot of egos have gotten and have gotten in the way of this Panthers team. Dave Tepper being one. I've been on the I've been on that hill since they for, for quite some time. Matt Rule being another. I think. Looking at what we the situation we came into and deciding to go the way you went is something to me that I can't get behind. I cannot fully think of a way that would that, that what the way you went made sense. Aside from the things that I've heard about you not wanting to have ego clashes with certain players, which is why they were let go and you and we moved on. But again, in, the, in a league where in a league full of grown men, if you're worried about egos and things like that, are you made for this league? Rumors coming out about Matt Rule and not being all in on the NFL from Joel Clatt. Nothing ironclad yet, but it's just easy, just rumors swirling around. I tend to believe rumors because where there's smoke, there's fire, and I do believe these things don't leak out on purpose. But I think that this is something that could, that could very easily be made up. But it wouldn't surprise me if it were a true statement. I mean, right now, we're just a team that's just very desperate. I think the fans are in flux. The front office is in flux. And we just can't figure out how to move forward. And the biggest thing here is that the mistake, the, the decisions you made have cost you. Not addressing the O-line. We will continuously say that to the cows come home. You did you, you lost this season when you didn't address that whole line. I said it from the beginning. A lot of us said it from the beginning. And as a, as a fan, this is why I'm telling fans to question everything from the front office to the coaching to players. Question all because we deserve better. We're going to have better at some point, but that point is not today. And I want people to keep the faith stay true, but also, don't be blinded by what a franchise is telling you. It's okay to question these things. And that's what I'm here to do. I want to question everything, because I want to get to the bottom of why we cannot win football games. That's what what we're here for. We all want to win football games. We all want Super Bowl championships, which we've never had. And so, to get to that point, we have to want more and demand more. I ain't saying no no uprising. I ain't that type of guy. But, I'm just saying, it ain't that wrong with questioning the leaders of your franchise. But I will catch you guys next time in your host, Shotzi Stewart. Be 
sure to follow us at P1N underscore network on Instagram and Twitter. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course. And again, thank you guys for getting us for over a thousand followers on our Instagram account, man. Doing it in less than a year. Very thankful that you guys even care to even listen to us and watch us each and every week, man. And, 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 and truly, this none of this happens without you guys, man. And I truly appreciate that, man. So, for all the purposes, man, I'm out.